I am happy that I have been privileged to get the opportunity to speak before this audience and I am very uh, lucky and I am proud that I have been invited by the Royal Society of Biology. I have been working on this Leishmania for more than 40 years, four decades. After coming back from USA and then Switzerland, I joined this institute in Calcutta and I have been given the responsibility of working, of initiating the recombinant DNA technology in India, which I got, which I learned in Switzerland from Charles Weissman's laboratory at the University of Zurich. Now, when I came, I was given the task of initiating the research on Leishmania. So the title, I will tell you the story, is an interesting, fantastic story. The title is A Tale of Cells Magicians, DNA Topoismarazis, and an Old Enemy, Leishmania. DNA topoisomerases, next, next slide, next, ah, DNA topoisomerases are important enzyme. They are very much involved in all the vital cellular processes like replication, recombination, integration, transcription, and so on. And Lishmania is an old enemy, is a parasite, is a disease. My previous slide, please. Previous one. First slide, yeah, it's a global burden. Next, ah. an estimated 700,000 to 1, 1 million new cases occur annually. Okay, it remains one of, one of the top parasitic diseases with outbreak and mortality potential. In 2020, more than 90% of the new cases of Leishmaniasis reported to WHO occurred in 10 countries like Brazil, China, Ethiopia, Eritrea, India, Kenya, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen. These are report from WHO. Next, see, this is the uh, 34 countries reporting Leishmaniasis and HIV together, co-infection. In, I remember in 1988-89, I was in Berkeley, and one of the discoverers of this HIV, Peter Dusberg, he told me, do you have HIV in India? At that time, there was no cases of HIV in India that, at that time. But now, it is very much every, everywhere throughout the world. As of 2021, Leishmania HIV co-infection have been reported from 45 countries. High Lishman HIV infection rates are reported from Brazil, Ethiopia, and the state of Bihar in India. This is a WHO report in 2020. Next slide. Next, yeah. This is a real picture. It's a, a fantastic story. You can see on the top left, there is a person whose name is Sir Ronald Ross. He is the discoverer of the uh, fact that the anopheles mosquito carries the uh, the plasmodium vivax. So it was the discovery. He got the Nobel Prize sometimes in 1901 or 02. And uh, on the right side top, this is a picture where Sir Ronald Ross used to work in Calcutta. This is the postgraduate uh, institute of uh, medicine. Uh, this is IPGME or research and medicine. Sir Ronald Ross and his wife, and then the two people, they are the assistants of Sir Ronald Ross. And the below there are three persons on the top, on the top, on the left, there is a person whose name is William Leishman, and in the middle, Charles Donovan. These two gentlemen, they were the doctors and they were work and they are, they are British. Uh, soldiers, they came to India uh, to treat the people uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the army. Sir Leishman, he has found out 
a, a one one soldier who is dying he took out uh, from the dead dead body uh, the spleen of the of that person who is dead and took it uh, take uh, and and took it to england and then he studied it and the middle is charles donovan he is the person he is also a british soldier he is a doctor he isolated the parasite from a soldier who is dying who, who, who is dead and then he isolated the parasite from the person from the macrophage phase of that person and then on the right left on the right side uh, at the bottom even brahmachari he is the person who saved the life of millions of people in india by by uh, by developing a compound urea skiva mine in calcutta in the presidency college in calcutta now next slide please next ah, this is a uh, letter this is a letter written by one letter i am showing you the example of only one letter this one letter written by charles donovan to sir uh, ronald ross that he has discovered a parasite from the from the human who is infected with a with a disease that is called black fever and that is the uh, he this is his discovery parallelly william lichwen also did the same thing he isolated and draw a picture of this uh, macrophages and the parasites in the macrophages so they claim that they are the discoverer of these parasites in the from the body of uh, Dead, dead persons. So, uh, Sir Ronald Ross then coined the term, keeping both of them happy. Make, and the term is the the name of the parasite he coined, Lashmania donovani. That means the two, name of the two scientists are there in the discovery of that uh, parasite. Next, ah, this is the. Clinical spectrum of leishmaniasis. Leishmaniasis is, is a complex disease. It produces so many scars and so many infections. On the left, visceral leishmaniasis. You can see the whole abdomen is being affected. Visceral organs are being affected. Then in the second one is post kalaza dermal leishmaniasis. This disease is so bad that after treatment of the person who is cured, and then six, seven, eight years later. He again develops the nodules in the faces, and those are called post kalazar dermal leishmaniasis. It's bad. They are the they are the reservoir of the parasites because apparently they don't show any disease when they were treated, and then after after that, after seven eight years, they again develop. And then the third picture is cutaneous leishmaniasis on the head, on the head uh, hand. You can see some scars are there, and on the right side, uh, this mucocute cutaneous leishmaniasis that is a scar in the in the mouth so these are the clinical spectrum of the leishmaniasis this the, these are not the all there are so many other spectrums are there which i am not going to show you here next see this is the picture a schematic diagram of the parasite leishmania and you can see on the left side this is the long slender form of the parasite and you can see that this parasite is very big. It has a red, so it is such a big mitochondria. Unusually, mitochondria and uh, nuclei uh, sizes are more or less the same. One can isolate the mitochondria from a uh, from any tissue by subcellular uh, differential centrifugation. But Lishmani mitochondria and the nuclei are same size. On the right side, there are the two forms. This is the left form is called the promastigot, or this is the form present in the human and uh, uh, is present in the vector which, are, which carries this parasite. And on the right side, these are intracellular form. Again, the mitochondria is there, but I will ask you to look at the top of that mitochondria, a blue region that is called kinetoplast, a specialized region of the mitochondria harbors the dna uh, in the in the kinetoplast so this is called kinetoplast and the kinetoplast contains the dna that's called kinetoplast dna that is in both the uh, chromastigot or insect form as well as in the intercellular form 
this kind of blast are very very important major discovery came out from this kind of blast or many kinds of molecular biological research next this is the sand fly which is the vector of the uh, of, of the parasite two different genera of sand fly transmits leishmania one is plebotomus and the other one is leuxomia plebotomus is old world see in, in india is a country which belongs to the old world and europe and other america they are in the they are uh, considering the new world countries so only 30 of the uh, 500 plebotomus species are positively identified as vectors next uh, this is Lishmania, this is the life cycle of Lishmania. It is a dimorphic life cycle because it is carried by the vector sandfly. And when the sandfly bites an individual who is already infected, it takes out, after biting, it takes out some blood meal. And that blood meal, it, 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 it takes the parasites from the blood meal. And the parasites are undergoing changes inside the vector. And then uh, they are called, this is the picture on the left topmost. Is called promastigot present in the vector, and on the right side, the amastigot on the top. These are present in the in the in the, in the mammal, mammals which are infected, macrophage of the mammals. So these parasites are present in the blood, and then when the blood is being taken by the by the sandfly, they're taken out, <coughs> and within the sandfly, the parasites undergo morphological changes and they become boasticos and amosticos. It's a circular form. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, the microscopic picture of uh, these promasticos and amosticos. It's very simple, done in the laboratory. No problem, there's nothing, nothing uh, any special. Everybody can do that. And the, you can see that uh, this is the place in, in the macrophage, the blue portion is called uh, the nucleus. And surrounding the nucleus, you can see the small, very small black uh, spots. These are the parasites. Okay. Next. Visceral Lishmaniasis is problematic till date. Why problematic? Because the diagnostic diagnosis is very difficult. Treatment is unsatisfactory. Post Kalaja Dharma Lishmaniasis appears as a sequel to Kalaja in some areas, and they are the reservoirs. PKDL serves as the reservoir of the parasite for <coughs> inter epidemic periods of the Kalaja. And with the advent of HIV epidemics, Kalaja has, uh, <coughs> has triggered uh, as opportunistic infection in AIDS patients. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine, and there is against this any any kind of lishmaniasis. So we have to rely on the on the drug. Next, please. So we have to rely on the drug. That means the chemotherapy, lishmaniasis, infection induces immunoepressive effect. No host response. No effective vaccine is available till date, and chemotherapy is the only choice. What are the drugs available now? You can see on the left, urea stubamine, which was discovered, prepared by even Brahmachari. I showed you the picture. Sodium antimony gluconate. These are the classical drugs available, and still these are being used. Second line of drugs are pentamidine, amputacin B, which is the antifungal antibiotic. They are very toxic, but high cure rate and very, very expensive. So what do you need? You have to develop some drug which are less expensive and at the same time, uh, which can be treated, which can be used for, the, uh, for treatment. Next. Next, yeah. Problems related to chemotherapy, amphotericin B and pentamidine are drugs of second line treatment. Amputericin B has become the drug of choice for Indian Kalaza. Though highly effective, it requires prolonged administration 
and is more toxic than SAG, sodium antimony gluconate, which is the, the, the line of treatment. Lipid formulation of amphotericin B, for example, it's called amphocyl or ab abelect and ambisome are new drugs for Kalazan. They are in the market. Ambisome is most effective but less toxic. Oh, what, but the cost is very, very, very high. One course of ambisome costs US dollar 2068, they have $2,000 for one course. But sodium antimony gluconate in US dollar less than 100 for one course. So, SAG, sodium antimony gluconate, is less toxic, uh, is, is less, uh, the cost is very less, but, but they are very, very uh, toxic. So, we need more active and less, uh, less uh, expensive drugs. Next. So, in my lab, when I started my lab at Calcutta, long back, I started one after another, and these are the areas in my lab. One is the basic enzymology of type 1 and type 2 DNA topoisomerases of Lishmania. Basically, I am a biochemist, so I was told to do some research on Lishmania, and we had the program uh, that we have to eradicate the Lishmania. So, it took 2020 is the deadline for eradication of uh, Lishmania, say, Kalaja in the country. Uh, we are almost there, but I don't know how long uh, it will take more. Then the clinical therapeutics and pharmacology. Third one is the program cell death mechanism. Program cell death induced by the topoisomer is inhibitors. Fourth is diagnostics. And fifth is the DNA damage and repair. These are the areas in my laboratory on Lashmania. I will take only a few uh, in this uh, seminar. So next. See, why DNA topoisomers are called self magician? They are also called wonder enzyme because they are ubiquitous enzymes involved in interconversion of topological isomers of DNA molecules. They are involved in vital cellular processes like replication, transcription, recombination, chromosomal segregation, etc. Mainly, there are two types of topoisomers type 1 and type 2. Depending on the mechanism of action, depending on how they clip the DNA and receive the DNA, they possess an inherent dark side capable of inflicting great harm to the organism, genome of the organism, and topoisomerase inhibition have emerged as anti cancer, antibacterial, and antiparasite agent. It's a fantastic target because it's a key engine for governing any cellular processes, like all this I, I already mentioned. So if you if you stop the action of DNA to wise all the subsequent reactions in the DNA transaction processes will be stopped. So that's why they are called a cell magician, and they are called they can also be made detrimental to the cell by with the help of the drug. Next, see this is a picture from the textbook for for the for the beginners. On the left side, if you if you take a supercoil DNA, just example for an example, it's a plasmid, and run the gel and stain it with ethylene bromide, you can see two bands. One is a very big band at the bottom, and the other one is the one band in the top. Big band in the bottom is called, called supercoil DNA, and the top is the relaxed DNA. Okay, this is a normal, if you isolate the DNA, and run the gel, supercoil DNA from plasmid, run the gel, you will get the picture. On the middle, you see that the supercoil DNA at the bottom, relaxed DNA in the top, and there are so many topological isomers. So many, 13, 14 isomers are there. They are the same DNA, but different morphology. And they, they have different point density. That's why they are migrating like that. And the assay is very simple because you take supercoil DNA, you add the enzyme, the enzyme will convert the supercoil DNA into topological isomers. That is the formation of topological isomers are the assay of the DNA topoisomerase. And on the right side, you can extreme right, you can see 
one, two, three, four, four pictures of same DNA, plasmid DNA. At the bottom, this plasmid DNA is highly superfine. And in the second from bottom, you see there are, there are how many? One, two, three, four, five, six bubbles are there. <coughs> Sorry. And on the third, third from top, you can see one, two, three, four, five. Five bubbles are there. And on the top, there is only one. And that is called relax. And they are super coiled. And super coiling density is different. That's why they are migrating uh, differently. And this is the assay, very simple assay. Take supercoiled DNA, add enzyme, and then run the gel, you will see the topological isomer. Now, if you can isolate a compound, and which you think that this compound may be an inhibitor of topoisomerases, do the experiment. Take the uh, supercoiled DNA, add the topoisomerases enzyme, and then the, on the third tube, add the supercoiled enzyme, uh, DNA, add the engine and you add the compound. If the compound is an inhibitor, it will stop the relaxation. It will stop the formation of topological isomers. That is the assay. Next. Next, please. Ah, this is a picture, it's, it's a very, it's, it's very, uh, I like this picture because you can see that uh, the previous slide, the previous one, yeah. You can see that this is the electron microscopic picture of the kinetoplast DNA present in the my, kinetoplast or mitochondria of the organism of Lishwania. We have isolated this kinetoplast DNA, we have developed a method and then isolated this kinetoplast DNA and did the electron uh, microscopy. What you can see that in the, it, it's a huge network of DNA where some it was calculated, not by me, but by others, that there are 10,000 circular DNA molecules are there. And all the DNA molecules are only one kb long, not more than that. Two types of circular DNA molecules are there. One is a very small type, these are called mini circles, and the other one is a very big circle, which are called maxi circles. Mini circles are only one kb long, and maxi circles are something around 25 to 50 kilometers long. And they are the equivalent of mitochondrial DNA. The code for all mitochondrial biogenesis enzymes, cytochrome C, apocytochrome B, NADH, deoxygenase, ATPase, and so on. And mini circles, which are only one KB, they do not code for, they are not sufficient to code for any protein. They do not code for any protein. They code for some small RNAs. And these RNAs are very important. Later, it, these RNAs came to be came out to an important RNA, which are called guide RNA, which are involved in the, in the maturation of the messenger RNA. Next. Now, see, in 1982, uh, one of the very famous scientists, his name is Paul England in, in uh, Johns Hopkins, he has proposed a model that since Leishmania and Trypanosoma and Critidia, an insect parasite, they have the mitochondria, and one parasite undergoes multiplication into two by asexual multiplication. Therefore, what is the what what should be the mechanism? Suppose this is the part of this cytoplasm DNA, and this on the right, on the left, uh, at the bottom, there are two circles, maxi circles and mini circles. Maxi circles are big, mini circles are small. He proposed that. When a parasite undergoes multiplication, the entire genome of the parasite, as well as the mitochondria, will be duplicated. And not only with duplication, with precision of duplication. Replication of DNA will take place with precision. He proposed that model. This is the kind of Brazilian on the top. In the 10,000 milliseconds are considered as a single one, one network, and then the, from the side, from the periphery of the network, the mini circles are coming out, they replicate and then go back to the network. So, and the, the, the network is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, ultimately dumbbell shaped, and later these two dumbbell shaped are distributed, divided into two networks and segregated into the two daughter cells. So, who will do this job? 
these mini cycles are coming out from the network, goes back to the network. So this is the, the job of the DNA topoisolysis. So what we did at the time, we isolated the plus DNA, and then we isolated the extract from rat liver. To, uh, and that is the extract means topoisolysis extract. We isolated that extract, and also we, bu we bought the topoisolysis too from market, that means the topogen company, and then we incubated that extract uh, uh, KDNA network with that DNA topoisolysis too, and then done the, electro, uh, the electromicroscopy. And these are the electromicroscopic picture of that kind of plus DNA. These are, this is called decatenation of the KDNA network. Next. This is a title of my, one of my, uh, half of my talk, DNA topoisomers one in Lishmania. DNA topoisomers are of two types, type one and type two. Type one is sitting on the DNA and cleaves the DNA in a single strand and then makes the DNA unwind and then reseal the DNA. So the job of the kind of, of the topoisomers is cleaving the DNA, unwinding the DNA, and the third is resealing the DNA, joining the DNA. So these are the three, three jobs they have to do. Type 2 topoisomers cleaves the DNA double strand, unwinds the DNA, and joins the DNA. Okay. Next. Now, see, Lishwani and Donohani, we have isolated the enzyme topoisomers 1, and we made, we claim that Lishwani and Donohani by summary topoisomers 1 is a missing link. In evolution of type 1 enzyme, these are the we have published so many papers. So why why is a missing link? Because throughout evolution, the type 1 B enzymes are only single subunit protein, only single subunit protein. But in case of human topoisomers, one, as you see on the top right left, that there's a green one and then uh, reds. So these are human topoisomers one, one, N terminal and C terminal one single uh, by protein. On the, on the right side, the, <coughs> sorry, on the right side, uh, there is a Y7 uh, something. This is the active site of the uh, topoisomers one. And the second one is the, is the, uh, one is the right, Top is human topoisomerase one, and then second is human mitochondrial topoisomerase one, and then the Lishmania topoisomerase one, one subunit and two subunit, and and Trypanosoma topoisomerase one, one subunit and two subunit. This this Lishmania and Trypanosoma, they are bi subunit or heterodimeric protein. That is the discovery. All the all the topoisomers one Bs are single subunit, but here in Lishmania and Tuberosoma and Crithidia, they are the bi subunit, and the activity uh, active site is present in the small subunit. These two subunits are com coming from two different chromosomes. Lishmania has thirty six chromosomes, and on the the large subunit is coming from the messenger RNA synthesized in the thirty fourth chromosome and small subunit which contains the active uh, uh, tyrosine is present in another uh, chromosome. So there are two different places there, they, they exist. So next, next slide, yeah. So this Lishmania, Donovani by 72 poison is one, a missing link in evolution of the type 1 enzyme. I mentioned that Lishmania to poison is 1B, is a bi subunit enzyme or heterodimeric. Tuberosoma, topoisomers one is a bi subunit, but human topoisomers one, single subunit. Throughout evolution, whatever you get the organism, they are all single subunit. We have cloned the gene for large subunit and the small subunit in Lishmania, tested this large subunit and small subunit individually after expressing them in bacteria. And we saw that 
On the left side, you can see some gel pictures. On the left top, you can see only the supercoiled DNAs in the plasmid. On the right side, there is also supercoiled DNA. No relaxation with the single subunit. But in the, at, the, at the bottom, in the middle, you can see the topological isomers. That means the large subunit and small subunit mixed together, they make the real uh, hollow enzyme for topoisomers. So that is the beauty of this topoisomers in Lishwania. Now this is a schematic diagram. Uh, you can see that this is the chromosome one, 20, uh, 34 chromosome, and the another one is a number four chromosome out of 36 chromosomes. Two different chromosomes that synthesizes, uh, they synthesize two different proteins, large protein and a small protein. Small protein harbors the active site. And that is the uh, situation. We have published this review work last year, not last year, in 2000, uh, two years ago, in in Biochemical Sciences. So next one is, the story is that it has been established from our laboratory and simultaneously with two others that this is a topoisomerase one B of Lishmania is a bisubmit enzyme. Why nature has provided this bisubmit enzyme? What is the reason? Because we have we we, we have this large subunit, we have this small subunit together. If we mix them two together, they are very, very active. But if you do not mix them, what do you if you take the large subunit and small subunit, join them one after another, and then use them as a single subunit, big single subunit. They are active. They also do the relaxation of supercoiled DNA. But the nature of the of enzyme is changed. They become more distributed than the processive one. So that is the physical properties of the enzyme has been changed. So that is the uh, beauty of these enzymes. Next, see, topoisomer is inhibitor. I told you that topoisomer is the, the targets for several anti-cancer, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic drugs. So we have developed some inhibitors. Some inhibitors are already there existing in the market and in the literature. We have also developed many inhibitors in our institute. We got a big chemistry department and I had a fantastic collaboration with them, synthetic chemists and also natural product chemists. See, inhibitors, Classify them in two types, class one and class two. Class one is called topoisomer poison, class two is called to catalytic inhibitor. Many inhibitors are there which are class two. That means what they do, the function of class two inhibitors are like that. When the enzyme is sitting on the DNA to exert its action, class two inhibitor will interact with the enzyme, do not allow the enzyme to sit on the DNA. That is called class two enzyme inhibitors. And class one inhibitors are the inhibitors do not prevent, they allow the inhibit, they allow the enzyme to sit on the DNA, exert its action, and on top of the DNA enzyme binary complex, this uh, inhibitor will sit on the DNA and it will make a ternary complex and that will stabilize the complex. When a DNA is replicating and on the on the replication side, if a fork is being stabilized, then it will be lethal for the cell. So cell will die. So that is the philosophy of this one and two inhibitors. Next, please. See, this is the, as I told you that we have a fantastic chemistry department, both synthetic chemistry as well as natural product chemistry. This is the compound lignan lionicide and lignan saracoside. There are the two compounds which are isolated from Saraka Indica. It's a big tree. From that, from the bark of that tree, this compound has been isolated by your, my colleague. So uh, this compound is, is an inhibitor of type 1 or type 2 DNA topoisomer. Well. I'll show that. This has been published. Next. Next. Ah, see, this is a picture. So on top, you can see that at the bottom of the, top, uh, the, the, the lens, a single, look at the number one lens, at the bottom is supercoiled DNA, and then 
second and third lens topological isomers means you are adding the enzyme so enzymatic action is going on producing topological isomers and then next you can see only supercoiled DNA back that means you are adding the inhibitors okay they are inhibiting the reaction so this is the way we can identify we can characterize that a compound is either inhibited or non-inhibitory. Then we have done the classical enzymatic studies. What we establish that this lionicide and left part is lionicide, right part is saracocide. So it's a good inhibitors we have developed in our institute and published that those like what. Next, see, whenever you, you develop a compound and you are thinking that yeah, it's an anti lishmanial compound. Anti lishmanial compound, fine, but then you have to see that whether this compound is anti lishmanial, but it should not inhibit the, uh, inhibit the enzymatic reaction of the host. Human has topoisomerism because it's ubiquitous. Everywhere it is present. So human topoisomerism are taken and then treated with this lanicide and sarcocyte and looked at the enzymatic activity. Human topoisomerism are inhibited at a very, very high concentration, not like the Lishmanial topoisomerases. So is a dose different uh, differences between the Lishmanial enzyme and the and the host enzyme. So therefore it's a, it's a good inhibitor of the enzyme. Now so what happens if we have a good inhibitor and it, which cleaves the parasite enzyme, does not cleave the human enzyme then what is what is the use of it you have to show that yes this is anti-parasitic and this should not be this should be effective in 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 the in the uh, clearing clearance of the in the clearing of the parasites in the infected individual infected mice next so this 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 flower is a very uh, common flower in india uh, this is called Taberna Montana Coronaria. It's an indole alkaloid, uh, vocamide. This compound is, is a very good inhibitor of uh, Lashmania topoisomerases. We have tested. Next. Next. See, the same thing we have done, the experiments, the, the inhibition of relaxation of the supercoiled DNA. How does it work? Effect on human counterpart and toxicity and efficacy against intercellular amostigotes. We have done all this, intercellular amostigote clearance, and then on human, what the, it does not do on human enzyme. Or if it does, it takes large amount of concentration. And next, ah, indole alkaloid vocamine, as I told you that there are two types of inhibitors is a class one and class two. Class two is a simple inhibitor. It does not allow the enzyme to sit on the DNA. It doesn't allow. So it's a class one, a uh, class two. And class one is, it allows the enzyme to sit on the DNA, exert its action. And on top of that, the compound is sitting on that to make a ternary complex and establish that stabilization of the playable complex. And there is a permanent damage creating to the or to the dna so you can see on the top there is a double stranded dna on top of that there is a poison rectangular black on, on on top rectangular black is a poison and then elliptical black is the enzyme sitting on the dna and then on the right side enzyme dna and uh and the poison the a ternary complex formation a stabilization of the complex Re replication fog movement is stopped double stranded dna break is going on and therefore uh, the cell cells are having dna replication is inhibited and that's a, it, it makes a the poison of the of the cell so increasing concentration of tc0 is the compound name stabilize the cleavage complex in vitro and act as to poison as poison so it's a class one drug. Addition of DHBA is another drug we have developed in our lab. 
it is a defined type of compound. So next, see we have done some electron microscopy and uh, of this on the, on the left, this is the electron microscopy or the scanning electron microscopy of the parasite Lishwania donovani. And on the right side is the Lishwania amazonensis. My amazonensis is not a uh, uh, organism in our country. So my student went to Brazil. Uh, we have a collaboration with Brazilian scientists in India. Uh, we have done, uh, tested the compounds against the Brazilian seed, Brazilian seeds as well as in Lashmania donovani. It's a good one for uh, uh, for Brazilian uh, 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 Lishmania cis, the Lishmania amazonensis or Brazilianensis. So next is next is the transmission electron microscope. You can see the entire picture inside after treatment, treatment uh, with the with the compound. That means uh, this bucamine. We have used that indole alkaloid. And there's lots of physical changes that they are inside the cells. I'm not going to tell you more. I'm just coming to closely to my uh, end. But next, see, we have done the same thing. You may ask the question that yes, you have developed several compounds. What is it? Why it is good for? Does it have any effect on the infecting uh, organic uh, animal? So we have taken the bouncy mice. Although Balsi mice and not the very good model mimicking human, but even then, Balsi mice, we infected with the parasite after a certain time, two to three weeks later, it accumulates the infection, and then we sacrifice some of them and check the burden of the parasite in the liver and spleen. And you can see that here on the top of the lower panel, the parasites are quite high. Now, if you feed the animal who are infected with the compound bocamine and there is a periodically we have to treat them and then after that sometimes later sacrifice the animal and then check the parasite in the spleen and blood and you can see that the parasite burden has come down after treatment of the uh, infected uh, animal uh, with this with this uh, compound so is good and now the now you come the next we should next slide so this is a picture of uh, anyway next next dna2 poison is two i i told you so far dna2 poison is one now we have been working on dna2 poison is two but i'm not going to tell you details of that again i tell you we have the chemistry department we have synthesized these isobenzofuranone derivatives in our uh, laboratory. So is a type two DNA repository. Uh, we have published this work. Is a is a inhibitor of type two DNA repository. Next, uh, these are the chemical structure of these two compounds, which are JVPH three and JVPH four isobenzofuranone, and these are assay for this type two repository. Is again a simple assay. Take the kDNA, run the gel. You will see only the the dense catenated network of DNA does not enter into the gel. They stay on the gel. And if you decatenate them, the mini circles will come down. You can see that the mini circles are here. Yes, the pointer is showing that. Take the kDNA, add the type two enzyme from Lishmania. And you see the decatenation is taking place. But if you add the inhibitor, just like I've shown the inhibitors, then decatenation will be inhibited. So you can also see the mini circles here in length number five and six, <laughs> four and five. But it means that the decatenation of plus DNA is inhibited by JVPS3 and JVPS4 by inhibiting the type two topoisomerases of Lashmania. Next. We have done the next. Uh, uh, just leave it next. Ah, again the uh, again the animal uh, in experiment infection is coming down after treatment with uh, this 
JVPS3 and JVPS4 of the infected animals. So this JVPS3 and JVPS4 are targeting to DNA topoisomerase 2 of Leishmania, and this Leishmania is infecting the animal. So animal is cured, infected animals are cured after treatment with this, with this uh, compound. Next. So uh, only a few compounds we are, I'm, I'm showing here. Uh, number one is a, in, is a 12 inhibitors of topoisomerase, is a synthetic one, type 2 topoisomerase, and inhibitors of, dual inhibitors of class 2 enzyme, diaspirin, luteolin, betulin, diindolylmethane, niranthin, lionicide, saracoside, and so on, spiroxindol and vocamide. These are the compounds we have, we have developed in our institute as, uh, as the anti lishmanial compounds. Now the question next is, so the question will come that you have developed for so many years some of the compounds for anti lishmanial as anti lishmanial agents. Now what is, what is your success? Have you been successful in developing a drug in, for your country? I would say no, not yet, because it took me so much years to develop the compounds. Now it will take some more time, and the next, next generation of people will come, come and then they will uh, uh, take these compounds and go for uh, the drug development. And we have also developed these diagnostic primers based, target, based, on, based on that uh, mini circles. Just look at this picture. There are two circles are shown here two circles, and one is shaded region of the circles. 10,000 mini circles are there. You take them, sequence them, and you get the sequence of all the mini circles, and then you do the blood search, compare them, and you can see that some mini circles are, are highly, uh, they have the sequence homology. So, we have compared the sequences and we found that these mini circles have on the shaded line is something around 23% of that mini circle. They are common. Sequential, only sequence uh, comparison, they are common. And the, the hollow one, uh, they are the variable side. They don't, their sequences are different. They're not common. So we have developed primers against this uh, conserved site. Conserved site contains the replication origin of the mini cycles from the conserved site, we have developed two primers and these two primers are something around 100 base pair apart approximately and then they're used as a PCR primer for identifying the parasites in the, in the infected animals. Next slide please. So look at that, this KDNA based PCR diagnostics. We are very successful. In the left, this marker, and on the and the lens which are glowing, they are the blood taken from the patients. This is the standard experiment, control experiment. Blood taken from the patient, isolated DNA was isolated from the blood and as a and used as a target for. PCR diagnostics, and they're all present. What I'm saying, the reason I'm doing is that this identification or, or diagnostics of this one is very, very tough. You have to do the lumbar puncture, needle aspirate, you have to take it, and then look at the parasites, LD bodies, which is very troublesome, very invasive. So this is something which is non-invasive, and this has been established. Many of the laboratories are doing that following that. So next, ah, this is the spread of Lishmaniasis from old world to new world. New world is in the, as I said, new world is United States and, and the South America and old world is this in our, in India and, and the Asian countries. And a, a, is a 4,000 year old Egyptian mummy, PCR diagnostic test so positive. See, that means the, this, that, this fish one here is present, was present 4,000 years ago. It's, a, it's not a new one. It's a very, very old enemy. So my, my conclusion is that 
Lishmania is there today. It was there earlier. Many animals, they become extinct by the disease. Maybe one of the reason, one of the reason Lishmania disease was, was there. So Lishmania was maybe a reason for the extinction of some of the animals. Okay. So this I am going to stop here by showing some more pictures in my lab. Next, next, next. See, this is the uh, picture of my lab for so many years. And I can see that on the top right, the leftmost person is me, me standing. And this is 25 years ago or 30 years ago. And today I'm sitting here in the, uh, with my, with my students, students. They are all very well settled, uh, become professors in different countries in India and other places. So uh, I, again, I thank Caroline for giving me the opportunity to tell you something about a little bit of our Lishmania research, because I, I, I told you only about the drugs development and uh, biochemistry of uh, DNA 2 poisonizers. There are so many other things out there. So thank you very much.